And synthetic data adds another layer to this feedback loop, as it can be generated in massive quantities to train models in ways that wouldn't be feasible with real-world data alone. I want to talk a bit about feedback loops, and in particular, some of the feedback loops that might be contributing to the rapid advancement in artificial intelligence. I have some of my own thoughts, but I'd like for you to start off and share some of yours first, and we can kind of riff on this idea together. Sure. One big feedback loop in AI development is between research advancements and practical applications. When researchers develop new algorithms or models and those get deployed in real-world applications, the resulting data and user interactions provide feedback that researchers can use to refine and improve their models. These improvements can lead to better performance, which encourages more adoption and generates even more data. So it's kind of a virtuous cycle. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, interesting. So the feedback loop I think you're describing there has to do with uh, with each advancement in artificial intelligence that results in more applications being deployed that include those advancements and that results in more people interacting with them that generates more data and more insights for the researchers to generate more advancements. Is that kind of what you're describing? Exactly. Each cycle of advancement creates a foundation for further progress. It's like building a ladder where each rung makes the next one possible. This dynamic is a key factor in the rapid pace of AI development. Have you noticed any other feedback loops that stand out to you in this context? Yeah, I think that's interesting. And, and I think that's kind of, um, it, it, it describes well kind of the, one of the classic uh, positive feedback loops in technological development broadly. Ray Kurzweil talks about this a lot too, and that's that with each advancement in any technology, the next generation or even the current generation that adopts that technology then has that tool at their disposal. So the next round of technological advancement, you have to bake in to you know the forecasting that they have those new tools in their toolkit. And so that's one of the reasons why we see this kind of exponential rapid incline in technological development, but also in artificial intelligence. That's a great point. Each generation of technology isn't just an end product, but also a new tool that accelerates further innovation. It's like the technology itself becomes a participant in its own evolution. This sort of compounding effect can make it challenging to predict just how quickly advancements will occur. Do you think this rapid development pace poses any challenges or risks? Um, yeah, good, good question. I do think that it poses challenges and risks, but first I want to talk a little bit more about some of the positive feedback loops that I'm observing that are contributing to rapid development in AI. Um, and the way that I've been thinking about this lately is there's, there's kind of four major inputs to artificial intelligence. There's data, there's compute, there's energy, and then there's what I might call broadly human investment, whether that comes in the form of financial investment or mental investment, just general human focus on the problem. And we'll start with data. And uh, and you kind of talked about this actually a little bit, GPT, which uh, which is great. Um, and you know, since really since uh, uh, since the the advent of the internet. There's been a proliferation and explosion of data. And as the internet became more widely adopted, more and more people were able to generate digital data that could be used for training artificial intelligence. And that that trend continues. More and more people are using the internet and using digital tools and using AI tools and are able to not only interact with them and generate data that way, but also more easily upload their own content, upload their own ideas to the internet broadly, which can then be used to generate more data. So there's kind of this positive feedback loop happening in that sense. And one last point on the data positive feedback loop, or we're starting to see synthetic data hit the scene, right? So uh, generative AI has made synthetic data much more commonplace. So models themselves are generating their own data. Absolutely. And synthetic data adds another layer to this feedback loop, as it can be generated in massive quantities to train models in ways that wouldn't be feasible with real-world data alone. 
This further accelerates the development cycle by providing models with diverse training scenarios that might not be available in existing datasets. And you're right, the proliferation of data has been a major driver for AI advancement. Computation power is another critical factor especially with the rise of specialized hardware like GPUs and TPUs optimized for machine learning tasks. As hardware capabilities increase, they enable more complex models, which in turn drive demand for even more powerful hardware. This creates a feedback loop between AI advancements and computing power, similar to the one with data. And of course, all of this requires significant human investment, which further drives competition and innovation. Yeah, I think that's well put. And, and to move on to the next two feedback loops, uh, compute and energy, I think one of the uh, most interesting ways to look at these two loops is through Jevons' paradox. Um, so both compute and energy have become much more efficient um, and much more available uh, over time. And, and, you know, immediate intuition might tell us that as a resource becomes more efficient, usage would decrease because you can actually do more with that resource. So you just don't need as much of it. But Jevons' paradox says the opposite is true. And it's been shown time and time again that the opposite is in fact true. Uh, what tends to happen really is as a resource becomes more efficient, its cost also decreases, and that in turn drives a much higher increase in demand. So usage ends up climbing significantly, and that's happened both to compute and to energy. It's happened to energy over a longer time span, but it's also happened to compute in, in the past you know, a uh, few decades as well. So I would anchor to Jevons' paradox as one way to describe those two feedback loops that are contributing to advancements in AI. That's a fascinating way to look at it. Jevons' paradox definitely does apply well to compute and energy in the context of AI. As compute becomes more efficient and accessible, it lowers the barrier for researchers and developers to experiment with larger and more sophisticated models, which in turn drives up the demand for even more computational power. The same goes for energy efficiency and access, which supports the scaling of AI systems that require significant energy resources to operate. And as these resources become more available and cheaper, it doesn't just enhance existing applications, but also opens the door for new applications and innovations that weren't previously feasible. This interplay between efficiency and demand is really at the heart of the rapid progress in AI. Considering these dynamics, what do you see as the most interesting or impactful applications emerging from these advances in AI? Well, before we go there, there's one more loop that we'll touch on just briefly, and that's the what we described earlier as kind of general human investment loop. And and the way that, that I'm thinking of that as a positive feedback loop is that every major advancement in artificial intelligence, uh, in particular, the one we're going through right now, now keep in mind, there has been a number of winters, right? Uh, but we're very much not in a winter at the moment. We're in a boom um, with each major advancement a lot of excitement is generated and that excitement results in more people either wanting to invest their own finances into the project or their own mental power, their own work, their own life into the project. Um, and so that's that kind of creates a positive feedback loop as well. Uh, but actually the next topic I want to move to GPT, we talked a little bit about positive feedback loops that are driving advancement in artificial intelligence. What about some of the negative feedback loops that are actually acting as constraints or limiters to advancement in artificial intelligence? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Sure. One negative feedback loop that comes to mind is resource competition. As AI development accelerates and demands for compute, data, and energy soar, these resources can become scarce or more expensive, limiting access for smaller players or researchers without substantial funding. This can slow down progress and create disparities in who can contribute to and benefit from AI advancements. Another potential constraint is public perception and trust. If AI systems are perceived as biased, unreliable, or invasive, 
There could be a backlash that leads to stricter regulations or reduced adoption, limiting the pace at which AI can be integrated into various sectors or even researched. And then there's the talent bottleneck. Finding enough skilled professionals to meet the growing needs of AI industry can be a challenge. Potentially slowing down projects or limiting the diversity of perspectives in AI development. What are your thoughts on these constraints? Okay, great. So just to summarize, the first one you mentioned was resource competition, which makes a lot of sense. The third one was talent availability in talent pools. Can you remind me of the second uh, negative feedback loop you mentioned? The second one was public perception and trust. Yeah. If AI systems are seen as unreliable okay, yeah. or have... Perfect. Yeah. Um, so I think those are great. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, there, there's, there's maybe two more that come to mind that I think would be worth exploring a bit. Um, one is environmental concerns and uh, and sustainability issues, especially when you consider the energy demands um, that we're beginning to understand artificial intelligence does and will continue to need. Um, so that's one I would add. And this and the second is uh, just regulation broadly from governments and, and legislation. Um, we're already seeing, you know, um, that happened in the EU through the EU AI Act. Um, California is starting to draft uh, AI legislation, and um, we will certainly see something from the United States federal government as well and other areas of the world, I'm sure. Um, so that's two that I would add, environmental concerns and governmental regulation. Great additions. Environmental concerns are especially pertinent as the energy demands of AI continue to grow, prompting questions about sustainability and the carbon footprint of large-scale models. Balancing the benefits of AI advancements with environmental impact is becoming more critical, and this could influence everything from how models are designed to where data centers are located. And with regulation, there's a balancing act between ensuring ethical standards and not stifling innovation. How regulations shake out could significantly impact the trajectory of AI development, influencing everything from research priorities to industry practices. It's a dynamic space to watch, and it'll be interesting to see how these factors shape the future of AI. Any specific regulatory developments or environmental strategies you're particularly interested in? Well, plenty, um, but I think we'll save that for another conversation, perhaps. This has been enjoyable. I, I appreciated hearing your takes. Um, you have a very kind of a balanced way of sharing your thoughts and a very neutral tone um, that I think uh, that I think people will appreciate. Um, so thanks again. Uh, why don't you let everyone know um, who's watching online say thanks and give us a subscription and a comment below and let us know what you want us to talk about next. I appreciate your thoughts. And for everyone watching online, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below with your thoughts or any topics you'd like us to cover next. We'd love to hear from you.